Welcome. Every month, the data on the world's weather and climate is collected by various meteorological organizations around the world, by aeroplanes, by boats, buoys in the middle of the ocean, and at remote scientific sites. This data is combined to produce a global climate report, and this is a summary of that report for April 2019. The global temperature anomaly in April was the second highest on record, with an excess temperature of 0.93 degrees centigrade above the 20th century average. It's interesting when you compare the land and the ocean, the land is warming up a lot faster than the ocean. The land got a temperature anomaly of 1.46 degrees centigrade above the 20th century average, whereas the ocean is only 0.72 degrees centigrade above the 20th century average, about half that of the land. Now this difference is reflected in the northern and southern hemispheres. The northern hemisphere has a proportionally more land in it, so its temperature anomaly is 1.08 degrees centigrade above the 20th century average. The southern hemisphere, on the other hand, which has more ocean, has 0.77 degrees centigrade. Here we have a map showing the temperature anomaly for a series of pixels across the entire globe. The average increase in global temperatures above the 20th century average for April of 2019 was 0.93 degrees centigrade. That's a full 0.1 degrees centigrade above April of last year. Now you note on this map that there are some areas where it's been relatively cool. Northern Canada is one of them and also the sea uh, off the south coast of Australia. However, to counteract that, there was this huge slug of land from Greenland through Northern Europe and into Siberia where temperatures were much above normal, in fact as much as 5 degrees centigrade above normal. There's also this large area of ocean that's warm off the western coast of South America and that's evidence of the El Nino that I'll talk about later. Now you can't tell from this map where there were records or where there weren't. So we have to go to something called the percentiles map which is what I'll talk about next. This is the percentiles map and the way it works is that they divide the range of temperature changes into five equal portions. Near average is indicated by white. Shades of blue indicate cooler than average with the darker shade of blue indicating record coldest. Red pixels indicate much warmer than average and the deepest shade of red indicate record warm temperatures. You will see from here that there are zero record coldest pixels in this map. There are only 11 much cooler than average pixels whereas there are hundreds of much warmer than average pixels and 91 pixels that set new records. There's another way of looking at this and that's to look at the individual station records. In April, the extremes of temperature were recorded at uh, 3,787 stations with record highs and 3,602 stations with record lows. That's basically a statistical tie. So uh, temperatures seem to be rather even, but year to date, still the high temperatures have it with 27,956 record highs and 20,778 record lows. That's a ratio of 1.3 to 1. I've added April now to the matrix of monthly comparisons. This is the ranking of each month uh, for each of the f last five years compared with 2019. As you can see, 2016 was the warmest year overall, 2015 the second warmest, 2017 the third warmest, 2018 the fourth warmest, and 2014 the fifth warmest. At the moment, 2019 is outpacing four of those years. So it's possible that it could end up in second place, though I doubt that it's going to supplant 2015 in that position, because if you can see it towards the end of the year, uh, there are a large number of first place finishes in 2015 so therefore it will unlikely to be able to surpass that. I think it's much more likely to be in third or even fourth place uh, in this ranking. This will make it likely that the last six years will be the six warmest years on record. We are often fixated on the temperature of the surface of the earth because that's where we live. However the upper atmosphere also plays a role in global climate. Here are the results for April for the lower and mid troposphere and the stratosphere. These results were compiled by two groups, the University of Alabama Huntsville and Remote Sensing Systems. For the troposphere, they find it was the third warmest April on record, with an overall warming trend of about 0.17 degrees centigrade per decade, very similar to that of the surface of the Earth. However, the stratosphere is cooling, and that is because 
radiation from the surface of the Earth that normally heats the stratosphere is being interfered with by the extra carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. UAH find it to be the fourth coolest April, whereas RSS the eighth. The overall cooling trend that the two groups find is minus 0.41 degrees centigrade per decade. Next, let's take a look at the cryosphere and we'll start in the northern hemisphere with the Arctic sea ice extent. And in April, it was at the record low. This is 18 consecutive years that we've had below average sea ice extent in the Arctic. The overall trend is minus 2.6% per decade. Now let's take a look at the Southern Hemisphere with the Antarctic sea ice extent. And in April of 2019, it was at its third lowest ever recorded. And that also marks three years of below average sea ice extent in the Antarctic. It seems that the El Nino is still alive and well. And according to the projections here, it should last through to the end of the year, although still remain a relatively weak El Nino. Now let's take a look at the levels of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Currently we are at 413.52 parts per million, which is a new high. I've heard rumors saying that all of these stations that measure this carbon dioxide are in the middle of big cities. I've shown here the 12 sites where uh, the Scripps Institute takes its carbon dioxide measurements. And as you can see, most of them are anything but in the middle of big cities. Well, in summary then, April 2019 was the second warmest April on record. That makes it 411 consecutive months with above average temperatures. El Nino is established and could last through the end of the year. 2019 is well on its way to becoming the second or third warmest year on record. So until next time, goodbye.